Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Parallel Programming Concepts course in OpenHPI. My name is Dr. Peter Tröger and the teaching team and me would like to guide you through six weeks of um, theoretical and practical discussions about the world of parallel programming. What is this course about? The idea of this course is to guide you through a set of theoretical and practical concepts in parallel programming um, in order to give you a chance to deal with modern trends in parallel hardware and software and to figure out if particular software and hardware solutions are suitable for your, uh, for your application domain. Um, we want to make sure that you, the audience, have the right course, so please um, try to see if the course content matches um, for your needs. This course is primarily intended for people that have skills in at least one programming language. Um, it's not relevant which programming language, as long as you have some experience in dealing with software products, with coding, and with computers at all. Um, this course is also good for you um, if you're interested in a general overview of parallelization concepts, so that you can figure out um, where is my particular target domain and where do I want to work in, in terms of parallel and concurrent software. Um, the course may also be helpful, helpful for you if you want to assess a particular technology, a particular library, a particular programming language um, for your particular purposes um, so that you can figure out if um, some technology actually solves a problem that you have in practice. Um, for some other people in the audience, the course may not be perfect. Um, one example would be if you already work on parallelization problems and you want to get insights and a lot of deep details in one programming language or in one particular library. In this case, it may be more interesting for you to use other resources on the web. Um, the course may be also not um, too beneficial for you if you have no programming or software experience at all because we will quickly go into particular concepts of parallel programming, so there is a need for having a broad overview of how software development and how software works. So what is the idea of this course? The idea of this course is that today parallel programming is a hype term, it is a relevant topic that occurs in a lot of articles, journals, newspapers, tutorials, even online courses. And, um, with this situation, we have a lot of terminology floating around, a lot of concepts, a lot of ideas, principles, and sometimes it's hard to keep up with all these concepts and to bring them into some kind of ordering. So what we try to do is we try to go through this cloud, through this um, large amount of ideas, terminology and concepts to give you a better idea of how to rank different things. How is the course organized? Uh, we will have six lecture weeks, as usual in OpenHPI courses, and we will have a final exam week, um, which is the seventh week. Um, in each of these weeks, we will have several lecture units, um, and in each unit, you will have a particular video, like you see it now, and each video will end with a non-graded self-test. So this gives you a couple of questions where you can make sure that you got the core of the content and the main ideas we want to deliver to you. Um, sometimes we will offer you reading material in the terms of um, web links or PDF files that you can consult. Some of these readings will be mandatory, most readings will be optional. So the idea here is that from time to time we want to give you additional text to consult and we want to give you more resources to consult if you want to have additional information. We will also try to give you sometimes a programming task or programming exercise although we will have no graded coding assignments in OpenHPI, um, at least we want to give you a chance to do some kind of coding with one or the other framework. So there will be optional coding tasks where we will later tell you some example solution that you can check your own solution against. Um, each of the lecture week ends with a graded assignment. In this assignment you will get a couple of points uh, where we make sure that you actually got the content and the ideas and so that you can afterwards get um, a course certificate. Um, with six weeks of lecturing, we will afterwards have six graded assignment results, and in all these assignments you can get a maximum of 90 points. In the seventh week, we have the final exam, where you can also again get a maximum of 90 points, and OpenHPI will um, award you a certificate if you have in some 
at least 90 points. So that should be possible. Um, OpenHBI has a forum, so there is a chance um, to discuss with other participants and with the teaching team um, about the content we tell you, about the particular ideas, about the um, self-test and other questions you have. We will monitor these forums and try to make sure that you get the right answers in time. And we will try to maintain a frequently asked question section where you can find the most prominent questions and the according answers from our side. How is the course organized? Um, in the first week, we will talk about terminology and fundamental concepts. The idea here is to have a quick walk through relevant terms, acronyms, hardware principles um, that are necessary for understanding the later concepts of parallelization. Examples here are Moore's law, the power wall problem, the ILP wall problem, but also stuff like Amdahl's law, which talks about the speed up you can gain with parallelization. After this week, in the second week, we start with the first huge class of parallelization um, approaches, which we call the shared memory parallel parallelism approaches. Um, in week two, we first focus on the basics, meaning common principles and programming tools that you can use regardless of the programming language. Examples here are barriers or semaphores, mutexes. Um, in order to give you a better understanding of how different programming languages and tools have things in common that help you with the parallelization task. In the third week, we then go more detailed into particular programming languages and libraries. So we will cover examples such as OpenMP, Intel thread building blocks, the Scala programming language, to give you a better overview of currently prominent um, programming languages and how they deal with uh, concurrency and parallelization. In week four, we then focus on a particular class of parallel hardware that is also very prominent now, and this is accelerators. Week four will be given by Frank Feinbube, who is our expert in this topic, and he will give you all the interesting details about accelerator hardware and software that is common and useful today. In week five, we then switch over to a second class of parallel hardware and software approaches, which we call distributed memory parallelism approaches. So this deals with theoretical concepts such as the actor model or the CSP idea from Tony Hoare, but also with more practical stuff like the MPI library and the according programming environments. The sixth week then concludes this course with a more generic discussion about programming patterns that may be relevant in a parallel programming world and best practices that are commonly accepted meanwhile, something like um, the dwarf concept we, um, that is well known in parallel computing environment, and different kinds of examples that hopefully show you how to deal with more complex parallelization issues in practice. After the sixth week, we will, uh, we will, then, we will then have the exam week, the seventh week, where you can um, answer a couple of questions in order to gain more points for your Open HBI certificate. So why do we do parallel programming? What is the general idea here? Um, when, we, when you look on today's um, world of parallel systems and parallel hardware and parallel software, you see a lot of trends. Um, one trend is that you have more and more parallel hardware in place. Processor designs um, are heading towards multi-core and many-core architectures. This is meanwhile the standard when you um, buy a new PC. On the other hand, you have huge uh, supercomputing um, systems, the so-called high-performance computing world, where parallelism is a key issue for decades. So this is a common thing that is meanwhile also relevant in standard desktop and server environments. On the software side, we have a similar situation that more and more software codes need to be ported to parallel approaches in order to give us some performance improvement from the existing hardware. So when you look into computer markets and try to differentiate between the different uh, reasons for parallelization, you can see that um, although there are different goals in the markets, the need for performance is always there. One example is the embedded market where we have smartphones or entertainment systems and all of these systems actually have a benefit from getting better performance um, while also they must uh, sh make sure that they try to save energy because most of these systems are uh, work on batteries. 
The second market is the desktop computing market, laptops, tablets, um, computers, desktop PCs. And here, the most relevant issue is price per performance. So you want to have performance, but you also have a price capping. So the focus here is different to the embedded market where we need to combine the energy consumption and the performance aspect. Here it is price and performance. The third market is the server computing market, backend systems that drive the modern IT industry and the web. And here you have the business service, the provisioning of the business service as primary goal. And here performance also counts. Yeah, you may be able to pay a little bit more for your hardware or for your software system as long as your business service is delivered. But performance is key again. So wherever you look, whatever the market is, performance is always an interesting and relevant goal. So the computer hardware industry is mandated to deliver constantly better hardware, improved hardware that gives you more performance on the software side. So how can you get that performance? Let's have a look into how applications work, how software works. Um, an application, a piece of software that runs on a computer system, regardless of the class, is typically a set of instructions. So you have a set of um, instructions that by default run sequentially one after each other and perform a particular task. This could be a computation, this could be some text processing task, interaction with the user. Um, it depends on the application class. If you now want to take this application and want to get better performance for this application, what are the different ways to achieve that? And um, Jeffrey Feister made a very interesting and um, nice to understand categorization of the different approaches, how to make anything faster, in this case, our application. The first idea um, to make an application faster is to work harder. That means that you take the sequential instructions that are there and just execute them in uh, less time, which means that you get a faster processing. This is something that uh, can be implemented by the hardware itself, which actually executes the instructions. But the problem today is that this approach is no longer feasible, and we will see in this week why this is the case. The second approach um, um, declared by Feister is to work smarter. So if you want to have something faster, don't try to just put more speed into it, but, to, but try to execute the same set of instructions or activities in a smarter way. And this is also something that is commonly uh, known and done in hardware systems and processor technology, as we will see. But it's also no longer feasible as the only solution, although it must be still considered. And the third way of doing anything faster is to get help. And getting help could be understood in, per, um, in processor hardware and in computer hardware um, as getting more processing elements, nor more units that actually do the work and let them work together in order to execute the, applica um, the application and the instruction. And this is how parallelization works. So it actually gives you um, a way of speeding up application execution by using more resources. But here we now have the situation that hardware and software must cooperate with each other. And this is something with, that we want to cover in this course. How can you use existing modern parallel hardware in order to um, get more performance by parallelizing your software codes.